Hey guys, my name is Thomas Miata. I drift a 1999 Miata that I bought as a retired FD car, and I've had it for the last six years. Been a, I've modified the car a lot since then, uh, but I've been actually drifting at this track for about eight years. So this is my home track, the first track I ever came to, and uh, I've been coming back ever since. That's awesome. So how do you like the track? What do you like about the track? What keeps you coming back other than it's your home track? Uh, I absolutely love the track. It's got a ton of options and road courses and hot laps and a lot of people showing up that I know from back home. And in the drifting community, you find you have to do a lot of traveling and, and this is my home track. So that's, that's the biggest thing, I think. But I love all the different options. It's taught me a lot in a short amount of time. So it, it could have it could have been completely different if I wasn't at this facility. That is awesome. And Coming you said up. the car is a former FD car? Yep. Yep. We know who the driver was. So Jeff Abbott drove that car in Formula Drift between 2010 and 2012, I believe, and then retired it. I bought it in about 2015 or 2014. I can't remember the exact dates. That's awesome. And uh, what engine are you running in it? It has an LQ9 with basic cam and valve train upgrades. So awesome. it's, it's probably like 375 horsepower to the wheels right now. How long have you been running that setup for? I've had a lot of engines go through this car. This current iteration is about two years old. Okay. Yeah. But I drove it on Drift Week during that time. So this this motor, you never know, it might go up soon. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Dan Savage, and I help instruct here at Summer Point Raceway for Drift Nirvana. How long have you been here? Uh, I got here about six today. I meant six. <laughs> 13 years? Yeah. Um, Summer Point has been very open for drifting. Uh, as far as being like a real full-blown racetrack, their uh, acknowledgement of the skill and the dedication it takes to do the stuff we do with these cars it takes a lot for a track to open up a facility that, you know, spent a couple million dollars on paving last year for us to just slide off and tear it up. So, um, so I'm a point raceway. It's, it's always been awesome for drifting. How long have you been drifting? Like what got you into drifting? I did some drag racing. I've, my stepdad has drag raced since I was in diapers, like from the beginning, not like recently. And <laughs> the, uh, just doing some, like my mom's here, like just like the family atmosphere of it, my brother always helps me with the car, is what kind of like pushed me into trying something else. So no one I knew was really doing drifting, so I just started learning myself and that brought me here. And then I realized like, you don't want to like mess up on a street like, and, and not be in somewhere where someone could help you or have a fire crew or a safety crew or something like that. So I definitely am one of the, harsher people that will harp on you to come to a real racetrack instead of renting out a facility that doesn't have any of that stuff. What do you like about the point Raceway? I like this about it, like I've never seen you guys before, but <laughs> your enthusiasm in uh, sharing whatever is going on. The uh, openness of this little car, I'll call it a little, oh my God, look, it's rubber from somebody else, <laughs> is so much fun to drive with, you know, Doug's car yesterday, like 700 horsepower. Like, there's so many different styles. Like, it's not just drag racing where you have a good reaction time and your car is 
fast at the end. Anybody can do that, like honestly. So the style that you bring forth, with the body kit or your wheel choices, it stands out to me is why I want to be a part of it. I bought this car in 2013 because I used to watch this car drift in like 2002. So this is like legit one of the first East cars, drift cars on the East Coast. Uh, drifting definitely started more so in uh, California and the influence of companies out West. But um, I used to watch this car at Old Dominion Speedway in probably 2002, 2003. And I never thought I'd be in this car, but I had a Miata, I drove the Miata really well. Um, enough to earn, a, like back then you would get an invite to do Pro-Am. And so I did Pro-Am in a Miata and I was able to borrow a Buddy's 240 and I ended up getting my license in 2007 for the 2008 season. And I was like, I drove a 240 for like one day. How? I got drove a Miata for years, so I'm gonna get a 240. So getting a 240 was really rad uh, because it is, uh, it's like the cheater button. I mean, we have three disease now, but I think these chassis, you can buy any part for them. Like, I'm not saying just buy anything and everything you can out of the catalog, but I um, had it since 2013 and I've slowly been working on it. I got this car as an excuse because I was driving pro, so I drove um, for a company, I drove an RX-8. 2014 was the first year of Pro 2, and I won that championship. I won uh, most head-to-head -head battles. I won highest qualifier award. I won the championship. Um, 2015 I ran pro, so I ran uh, all eight rounds, opposed to pro, pro 2 was only four rounds. So I finished like 22nd overall in 2015 and uh, I realized to keep doing it just costs more money and I, I kind of just like shut it down. I was like, if I can't like, the marketing gurus that can do it now, it's, it is such a full-time thing. So you can't go into like a pro series half-assing it. So. I acknowledge that and I'm like, I gotta, you like, the career's <laughs> taking off this way, drifting's gonna take me this way. I can't be meeting in the middle anymore, so, but pro drifting was incredible. Do you miss it? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, 20, also going back to pro drifting, 2013 I got the spot for Chelsea Denofa. So, yeah. He's like yeah. My, one of my favorites, so. <laughs> he, he started in the Miata. Yeah. He picked you to be his first yeah. time spotter in Florida. He, yeah, Cole called me, hey, I need you. His first option was you as a spotter. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's um, awesome. That's pretty sick, yeah. All right, so a spotter in pro drifting, it's uh, like a NASCAR, like go faster and left. Like there's a guy saying, go high, go low, clear. The spotter will tell the driver where they need to better themselves on the course. Uh, the spotter is next to the driver on every driver meeting. The spotter can be straight up with their driver and say, do this better. Um, and if you have a dynamic driver, like Chelsea, he could do it. So, 2013 was the introduction to, I had earned, I don't know, I earned three pro licenses in pro-amps. Uh, one in US Drift, one in Streetwise Drift, and then another one in US Drift to go pro. Um, so my path was it, and then it was just finding the right company to support me enough to do it. So, almost had the support, and then it's like, okay, well I get to travel with somebody for eight rounds. You know, when I left my house and went to the airport, I would fly out and everything was covered. Like that's a rad opportunity to grow into the sport. So I'm not saying I blame Chelsea, but <laughs> Chelsea's, Chelsea's rad. He's, he's my dude. Did I even answer your question? I think you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Mom's looking disappointed. Over there. Do you have any advice for somebody who wants to get into drifting? Don't build a car. <laughs> buy, a, buy a 350Z, buy a G35. Look through all your footage, see what everyone's doing. Get a E46, get an E36. Um, don't buy a car that needs work. Don't buy a project, because then you're not gonna be driving. Then you're not gonna be paying for events. So your best bet to get into drifting is to buy a 350Z, E46. Like, just something that works. Like, you don't, you can't just, no one just has a rig. Like, you have to buy all that. Yeah. You have to have somewhere to store it. Yeah. Um, dabble into it, yeah, don't jump into it thinking you can do just go, everyone's gonna have an idol they look up to, but that person didn't start with a stacker rig. Are we gonna edit this? So this car. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, 93 240SX coupe. It is, it's all super doof out. Um, fiberglass doors, the whole rear quarter kit. It's a VQ35HR, so it's an 08 3Z driveline. Stock 408 diff. Um, stage wheels, it's sick. Uh, GK Tech, all steering angle stuff, so if you saw me doing any stuff yesterday or today, uh, it's what I like. But this was a car that just had normal stuff on it.
So, finished up lunch. We came back over yeah, to it. Shenandoah Circuit, but we also got in our interview with Dan Savage. Dan Savage. Pretty sweet. He was actually a really cool guy. Not like we didn't expect anything else, but you know. <laughs> yeah. But he, it was really cool. He was uh, he was really friendly, gave a lot of really nice advice, and it was kind of cool to pick his brain on his time in FD and also. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, that's sick. He's been killing it. I, see, I saw him a few times. But it was cool to pick his brain about, you know, his time in FD and Summit Point and all of that too. Yeah. But yeah, so. He gave some pretty good tips on like what kind of car to, to yeah. use this car. Yeah. Those guys have been tandeming all day and they are getting in sync. I don't know if we got it on film, I can't remember, but somebody threw a belt in the middle of their run. Let's do a belt review. Honestly, it's in really good condition. Um, probably listed on Facebook for like, uh, probably about like $300, you know. No, no low balls, I know what I got. 17 cents in a Big Mac meal. Yeah, I'll take it. What's up guys, my name is Pablo Sags. Uh, I'm here at Hunter Drifters today on Sunday, second day. Uh, everything's winding down. I brought my 93 JZX90 Mark II. Uh, a little bit about it. It's on Euros body kit, BRB5 wheels, 18 by 9.5 plus 25. It took me like 10 years to find them. Uh, BR steering wheel and tilt. Uh, D-Max arms, pretty much everything. Uh, IS300, Megan on the Miller knuckles. Uh, let's see, front mount intercooler. JZX100, uh, radiator, 2JZ, water pump, uh, GP Sports, uh, triple back exhaust, uh, grid, Argus 2 seat, a couple other things. Uh, it's on BC coilovers. Uh, came out here to see a bunch of friends I haven't seen in a while. With COVID, you can't really see anybody, not that much more. So I came out here to support and see some of my friends. Um, I have a 93 240SX convertible that I've been building for about 10 years, about 10 years now. RB25 built motor, Ford 176-70 turbo. It's on the Spirit Ray Odivia wide body kit, 18 piece. So it's in the middle of getting right hand drive converted and two fronts already done from cage kits. ARC front end cooler, radiator, and oil cooler from ARC. A couple other ARC goodies too. Uh, Power by Max, everything including their drop knuckle kit. CTSV brakes, uh, three inch turbo back uh, Power by Max, carbon Ganadors, Brace Data 3 carbon fiber additions and carbon. So a bunch of other stuff on that too. And then uh, I have a Grom, a 2018 Grom. It's a full carbon fiber entire frame, or entire body rather, with a CBR 300R engine swap on bags, custom T37 wheels, and some Brembo four pistons. But uh, yeah, so I mean, what got me into cars though was uh, as a kid, I didn't really have any friends growing up. I was a kind of loner, swapped schools a lot, went to like six different schools. So with cars, it doesn't really matter as long as you have a nice car and you're like a good person, everyone really likes gets to know you, you're, you know accepted as who you are. So that's one thing that I've always liked about it. So uh, that's why I always surround myself with car friends and for the most part it's been pretty, pretty good. Uh, pretty awesome. good. Is this so, your uh, first time at Summit Point? Uh, I've been here a couple times before. I used to come here a lot back when it was Hyperfest. So okay. that's back in the day. That's awesome. So uh, it's been to 100 drifters a couple times. So I've seen here, I've been here a couple times already, but it's been a long time. Hey guys. <laughs> so this is pretty much uh, the end of the event. You know, cars are still going crazy, but we're gonna head out soon.
We're yeah, tired. We're very tired. It's been a blast, though. I am falling more in love with this track every time we come here. Honestly, same, because like, we've got so many great people today. The environment here is just amazing. Seen and, a lot of cool cars, too. Yeah. Cool cars, cool people, people doing crazy drifts. Um, they're still going at it. The event goes till 4.30. We'll probably film a little bit more before we head out. Mm -hmm. But we just thought we'd film the intro while the sun was, or the outro while the sun was still here. Yeah, before it got too dark and you can't see us. So, yeah. but thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Make sure to like, subscribe, right. follow us on everything. Instagram, TikTok, you know. Yeah. yeah. We're almost at 13K. <laughs> but yeah, that's everything. Thank you for watching. Peace.